Vijay Pixel will be talking about uh, Memelab and uh, his experience and models. Ended up happening is along the conversation we were having with Tag, is Memelab became a co host as well. So uh, Memelab was doing a residency here, a gas station for a month, and it seemed um, to make a lot of sense to integrate their residency into ours. Uh, but I'll give you Pixel to talk a little bit more about that. Okay, um, I am Pixel. I'm an artist, but at the so same time, I right kind of research and I really like to experiment business models. So, right now, I've been working on two places. One of them is Memelab, as George said, um, and the other is an NGO that's called EB. Good. Okay, and I've been in the last uh, 15 years, I've been working a lot in the design of labs. Some of them were temporary and some of them aimed to be permanent. And one kind of pattern that I found is that out of those that wanted to be permanent, that was created as NGO are still running today. And most of the labs that was created as permanent and adopted other business models, just most of them just was closed. So I think that it's like this kind of operation can be a good way to a lab to work. So I've been talking about two cases here, like two cases that I was part of the creation of the lab and the lab is still running. Next one. Um, one of them was uh, is a lab that was created on inside an NGO, like an environmental news NGO, as an innovation lab for journalists. And what happened is that it was created there and it started to grow. And at some t point, the people inside this lab wanted to work with like other kind of approach that's not journalism. And then it became like the bigger project of the NGO, bigger than all the other projects together. And we decided in agreement with the board of the NGO to leave and create a um, specific structure. But at that time, we didn't know what this so structure should be. And we started working and got some grants, but most of the money went from giving service because we created lots of uh, very good tools inside of the lab. And people just like other NGO just came to us and said, oh, I really like your tool. Can I implement in my project? And we started to just modify these tools to implement in other projects. But the good thing about this, this work of giving service is that since we work with um, free software all the time, free and open source software. Any project that we that are using one of the our tools, when other people hire us to build an, like an improvement to the tool, the older projects can get an update. So it's like you paying for a service, but you getting this kind of constant updates from time to time, and it's good for us too because. Our own software, like our, our own project, also has these updates. And the so the business model of this uh, NGO, this association, is uh, this giving service and also getting some grants to uh, try to create our own projects and create our own to tools. And all, everyone that's inside the NGO is a volunteer to the NGO. But uh, our focus is always trying to hire someone inside the NGO to give another project, to work on another project. And uh, the second one is Garoa Hacker Club. 
It's a hackerspace in Sao Paulo. It's actually the first hackerspace in Brazil. And many of the other hackerspaces use us as a model, so it's like being a very good experience to give in so some uh, tips of how to create a like hackerspace and helping some people to create their own hackerspace. I've actually created another one in other seats after that, the seat I'm born. And uh, we created this NGO. And one of the like the beautiful things of it is that in Brazil we need this document, the Estatute. I'm not sure if here you need the Estatute to have an NGO too. Memorandum. So the government needs to approve it, right? In Brazil, we had this document, and the Article 42 of this document, recognized by the government of Brazil, is Garo recognizes 42 as the answer to the ultimate question about life, the universe, and everything. It's completely amazing. Other hackerspaces tried to do that after us, and the government didn't allow in other places like other cities because it's decentralized. And the business model of Garoa is everyone is volunteer, and Garoa never pays anyone to do nothing. So we always working as volunteers on Garoa. And uh, Garoa is maintained by the memberships of people there. So we don't got grants, we don't try to get grants, we don't accept big donations from institutions, we just accept donations from people because we want to have the decision. So we want to have Garoa as the way that we want to have, without having any institution interfering. Well, if any of you want to talk more about this, I'm here. And after the conference, you can send me my email. Thank you. Okay.